People have asked me uh, why I transitioned New Age to an ESOP. Today I'd like to give you a bit of my thinking as well as uh, the journey that I took in setting that up. I was very concerned about uh, retirement for our team members of New Age Industries. Would they have enough money and would Social Security really cover them? So we already had uh, a couple retirement plans already in place, 401k, a pension, and we had a match with, uh, with them. And I took a look at all of that money uh, uh, together and it just wasn't enough, I thought, for retirement for the team members. So I started looking at other models and I took a look at the ESOP model and this was back in the mid 90s. And along with concerned about um, their, their retirement, I also was looking to supercharge our organization and really have a high performance team. So I had other reasons for doing an ESOP along with the retirement money. I felt that an ESOP would be good for the corporate culture of the organization. It would be a great reward for long-term team members that really helped uh, build the organization. I thought it would attract new team members too because they would probably want to work for a, uh, an employee-owned company versus a non-employee-owned company. And I felt that the ESOP would keep the team members together, which it has done that. And it would differentiate us from our competition, which are large multinationals, billion dollar companies, and they buy and sell companies. And of course, I was able to take money off the table. New Age was one of my largest assets. And at the end, New Age would become tax-free, and that would actually add more money to the retirement plan for all the employees. So all in all, I was very pleased with my decision to uh, set up an ESOP for New Age, and I'm very happy with the results. I've seen a transformation at New Age Industries since we had gone with the ESOP as a business model. Let me give you some examples of that. So every day that I'm in the office, I do MBWA, managing by wandering around. I walk the four corners of the, uh, the business and uh, I say good morning to uh, the uh, team members and how the sports teams are doing. And um, we have lots of uh, fork trucks that are bringing raw materials to the uh, production lines and taking finished goods back into the warehouse and they're going all, all over the place. So one day I see um, a fork truck driver um, riding the fork truck and he's laying a patch, if you will, spinning the wheels of the fork truck. He's basically beating up the fork truck, beating up the wheels of the fork truck, and he's beating up the floor, which is getting marred by the wheels. So I go up to the team member and I say, why is it that you're beating up your fork truck. And he kind of goes like this. And I say, here's a better question. Why are you beating up Joe's fork truck? Because he owns that, that fork truck 100%. And his head goes down. It's a different conversation that management can make with the team members about ownership and about the company. There's this ownership of all the equipment, raw materials, energy, they own all of it. And a vast majority of them, they treat it as their own. It's, team members are bringing process improvement projects to the leadership teams. Line team members are making suggestions on how to improve different situations or processes within the organization. This improves efficiency, lowers cost, improves margins. It's great to see this as a leader of the organization. I sold my company in a series of tranches over 15 years to the, the ESOP. Let me give you an overview and some of my thinking of 
why I did that and why not do 100% at one time. ESOP will not pay strategic value for the shares. They'll only pay financial value. How could I get strategic value and also accomplish another objective of mine, which is getting a high performance company? So in 2006, when I first originally uh, set up the ESOP, I wanted to make sure that the organization understood how to make money, how could the uh, team members actually contribute to driving up share value. So we developed a five hour, five one hour session uh, training class about how the ESOP works, how New Age makes money, um, how can they contribute to making profits for the organization within their own job, and the results. Over that 15 years, share price has gone up a thousand percent. And this is driven, this was really done uh, during the Great Recession, which we only lost 5% during that period of time. Um, I started the process in 2006 when I was in my 50s. So it allowed me to have some um, uh, uh, running room of, of staying with the company and still selling those shares. It was an excellent decision. Uh, the process went well, um, so much so we had our first millionaire um, retire in 2019 and we have a few other millionaires that are still with the company that their, ac their account balance is over a million dollars. The total value of the ESOP right now is $38 million and that's for uh, 200 employees. The company now is tax free. Um, and so we can really take some of that money that we were sending to the IRS and build the company and also provide a better uh, retirement for our team members. So it was a classic win, win, win. I'd like to show you how a subchapter S ESOP works and how the shares and money are transferred within that uh, business model. So we're going to be talking about a subchapter S, not a C corporation. Most small and mid-sized companies are subchapter S. So we're talking about sub S. So in a sub S, you have a company there. You have a shareholder and you have the IRS. And so when it comes time to pay taxes, so let's say this company has, um, just for argument's sake, a million dollars of tax liability. So the company writes a check of a million dollars to the selling shareholder, and the selling shareholder deposits that and writes a million dollar check to the IRS. In a subchapter S, the company does not pay taxes directly to the IRS. They pay it through the shareholder, okay? So, along comes uh, the selling shareholder decides that he wants or she wants to uh, make an ESOP. So, we have this player. So, let's say the selling shareholder decides to sell 30% of the shares to the ESOP. So there's 30% ownership, and now the uh, selling shareholder has, oops, 80, 70% uh, of the shares, okay? And so let's say tax time comes. So um, since the organization is only liable for 70% of the uh, of taxes. It's not a million dollars anymore. It's 700,000 check gets written to the selling shareholder and the selling shareholder sends a check of 700,000 to the IRS. And the ESOP says, I own 30% of this company. And if you're doing distributions, or dividends, 
I get 30 cents of every dollar. So $300,000 goes to the ESOP. So money that was going to the IRS now is going to the ESOP for the retirement of the employees. Now, the selling shareholder wants to get paid for these shares. So we have another player, and this is a bank. A bank makes a loan to the company. The company pays for the shares, and the shares then flow to the company, and they are up here in an escrow account. But the ESOP has control of those shares. There's a loan between the company and the bank, and there's also a loan between the company and the ESOP. Okay? So that's how the selling shareholder gets its money from the bank through the company, and this is how the company actually starts supplying cash to the ESOP. Now here are the team members of the ESOP. They are, they own a piece of that ESOP trust. Upon retirement, let's say this team member is going to retire, and he, every team member has a share account and a cash account, that share account is turned into cash. All those shares are turned into cash, and now he has cash. And he then puts it into his or her IRA. Now, no taxes have been taken out from their accounts yet. And when they deposit it into their IRA, still no taxes. But when they go to buy the boat, and of course everybody in retirement buys a boat, that's when the IRS gets their money. So this isn't a tax-free entity uh, model, it's just a delayed tax deferred model where the IRS does get their tax dollars but delayed through ordinary income from the team member um, uh, in their uh, account. Now, let's, let's take this even further. So instead of 70%, let's say the ESOP now owns 100% of, of the company. Now, no money is going to the IRS here. And what do you do with all that extra money that, is, that hasn't been going to the IRS? You can start building the company, making acquisitions, buying buildings, buying equipment, and actually getting more retirement money for the uh, employees of the company and paying the, uh, the employees more uh, higher salaries. And that's exactly what happens with many ESOPs. So this is how a subchapter S corporation works with an ESOP.